Welcome to our instructional module on uh, installing Google Fonts for WordPress. Now before I get started, let me just pull over for you. This is, a, uh, this is the website that I've um, given you a link to on our instructional page and this is Google Fonts uh, repository of all of their font pieces. And what you can see here is basically samples of what the font would look like under different conditions. Poster, if I flip over to paragraph, what it would look like uh, under a paragraph, uh, sentence, and individual words. And of course, I can um, make all sorts of different changes here to uh, filter out the fonts that I would like to get to. For example, if I only wanted uh, handwriting fonts, to be displayed. I could do that here. And so you can see that there are quite a few different options and selections. Now, again, if you've read our articles on this, you'll know that fonts are something that the traditional web designer has struggled with. If you have a traditional website, you're really dependent on the end user having that font installed in order for it to display correctly. However, with the advent of web fonts and particularly Google web fonts uh, that have an awful lot of these, um, you can actually grab code um, and this whole deal of adding to collection, that means that um, it's going to grab some code that you can actually insert into your web page to um, make that font display. Now, you can certainly do that with all of the skills you've learned in terms of um, adding it to your HTML. However, uh, we don't really want to do that per page. We want to have something that drives um, these fonts across of, uh, our WordPress site. So let's learn how to do that. Um, here in, under our plugins, I have already gone and inserted a plugin called WP Google Fonts. And certainly if you were to, I'm going to just show you, I would click on Add New and I would type in WP Google Fonts and I'd search for that particular plugin. Now, WP standing for WordPress, um, this is one that I've used. I know it works fine, so I've gone ahead and, and installed and I'm teaching you that. But notice here that there are some other uh, Google Font tools that are available, so you can certainly play around with them. Be cautious making sure that the plugin works with your version of WordPress, etc. Um, but those are things that are uh, out there, so there are plenty of choices to make. Um, once you've gotten it installed, if uh, you want to invoke it, you're going to go under Settings and under Google Fonts. Now, here's uh, the uh, control panel for that particular plugin, and what I can do is I'm going to show you that there are uh, a ton of different fonts here. Not every not every Google font is loaded in this little plugin, but um, certainly plenty for us to uh, play around with. So I'm just choosing one, don't know what it really looks like. Um, however, once I've chosen it, notice that this is the only thing that the author um, has given us the option for. And now our next choice is to which elements, elements do I want to apply this font. And this is where it comes back to the, our understanding of HTML. So here notice that I can apply it to H1 tags, 2, 3, etc. I can apply it to block quotes, paragraphs, lists, all of my body tags, etc. Well, in order for me to actually see a change, I want to make sure that I have actually applied some of these uh, uh, um, HTML tags somewhere in my uh, pages. So before I even do that, I'm going to jump over to pages and I'm going to go to the home page. I know I have content there in my sample and I can click around here and I can see that indeed most of this is just sitting in as a paragraph. Once again, hopefully by now you've read all of the little pieces on fonts and know by now that a um, <clears throat> sans serif font is the way to go for text content. And if I go ahead and load this page here, I can see that indeed I've got a sans serif font. San meaning without, serif are the little uh, embellishments at the ends of each of these uh, pieces. That is um, from research uh, the more uh, easily read of our fonts on a uh, web page. We want to go with sans serif. 
However, what if I want something decorative because we can play around with the rules in terms of decorative fonts when we're looking at titles and big chunky kinds of things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to highlight this and I want to make it a big title, an H1. And maybe I want to make these and H2. And I'm going to be consistent because that's always a good thing. Our, our audience likes consistency. And week three, heading two, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and do this module two down here. I'm going to make that a heading um, four. I'm going to go ahead and update that. And now I'm going to go ahead and reload that over here. Now I can see that this is nice and large, this is a little bit large, this is a little bit large, and this is a different size. There's not huge numbers or huge variation in these sizes. If you wanted huge variation in the sizes, you would then have to get into some CSS stuff. But for our purposes, we want to visually enhance this page by making these different from the body text here. So we want to apply Google Font to anything with an H1. And we want to apply a Google font to anything with an H2. Let me just make sure I've been consistent. And then I've got an H4 going in here. And of course, you want to be consistent with your application of HTML tags throughout your site. Once done with that, or assured that that's where it needs to be, keeping in mind, you can go back and apply them at, at any point. Um, but you won't see any changes until they're actually there. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my... Um, font control panel and again you know what I'm not really sure what these look like I would uh, in order for me to see what these look like I would want to come back to the website gads hold on sorry yeah I'd want to come back to the website to get a visual of what these look like um, but for right now I'm just kind of guessing and playing around I'm going to install this thing called bad script to all of my h1 tags and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to, again, I'm just strictly picking different kinds of things, something called uh, cherry cream soda, why not, to my H2 tags. And I'm going to, uh, because I know I have an H4 tag as well, um, I'm going to pick a font for that as well. Then I'm going to uh, come to... Uh, go ahead and click on save all fonts. Um, it says your fonts were successfully changed. I truthfully don't know if I have to save these individually. I don't think I do. But certainly if you feel like you need to be obsessive like me and click on all of these little save fonts, you can do that. But I'm going to assume that it's all um, the same. Now, <clears throat> according to your directions, what you should have done is or should do before you even start this is create a PDF of your site the way it looks right here with the standard fonts. So you've applied your heading tags, etc. Now that I've gone ahead and applied those pieces, I can go ahead and reload this page to take a look. And there are my changes. So this is this font up here is apparently what bad script looks like. And cherry cream soda apparently looks like this. And here's that module two. There's that my H4 tag sitting in there. It's called Indie Flower. Um, knowing that I can go back and change these at any time that I want to. Um, let's go with something called Pathway Gothic One. I'm going to keep it on the H2 tag. I'm going to save that. I'm going to come back and take a look at what it looks like. Eh, whatever. Um, the thing to know about fonts is this, is that, of course, just because you can install them doesn't mean you should. Um, they are visually appealing to break up the page. I would highly recommend that you play around with adding some types of fonts. But you don't want to add fonts that are so heavily um, embellished that your end users cannot uh, visually discriminate what, um, what they're supposed to be looking like. Um, in addition to that, fonts, just like colors, should really work together. Um, I've just installed this thing called School Bell. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So, for example, here, this this to me looks a little bit like maybe a child's handwriting. 
and so does this one down here. And in my mind, these would kind of go together. Um, <clears throat> however, there's nothing wrong with choosing one additional font and applying it as an H1 tag up here, perhaps an H2 down here, perhaps an H4 over here. They should vary in sizes by the fact that they're H1 through 6 designations. So again, there's nothing wrong with taking one single font and applying it to um, multiple things. So for example, to do that, of course, all I would do is instead of doing it with font 2, 3, and 4, I would perhaps just choose it this way. Okay. Um, not going to do that here, but um, those are the things that you can do. Notice that if you wanted a font uh, on a list, you would have to uh, apply that as well. So again, there's no reason to um, choose every font in the world just because you can, but they are a lot of fun and can add uh, a huge amount of visual appeal and uniqueness to your site. So go ahead and go complete your exercise.